So, with not much further delay, I'm uh, really honored uh, to invite Professor uh, Sharon to address uh, his talk. I think I don't have to uh, give so much introduction on Professor Sharon. Uh, Haifa born, uh, he studies at the Hebrew University, so as um, emeritus uh, at the Islamic and Middle Eastern Studies, chair in the uh, Baha'i Studies of uh, the Hebrew University. Um, well, his corpus uh, is the big opus that everybody is following, always waiting for the next volume and the next volume. And actually today we're gonna actually hear about one of the uh, entries that is so interesting that we find in his uh, corpus on Jerusalem, the first volume on Jerusalem, uh, on an inscription that is no longer extant, but it was seen by the custodian, right, of uh, the Terra Santa in the 17th century, uh, dating 65, and uh, with no further delay, uh, we would love to hear what Professor Shannon has to say. In fact, after the, after the introduction of the chairwoman, um, we can move to questions because she has already gave the lecture. <laughs> Um, I will start by giving the definition of few things which are going to be repeated in the <coughs> going to be repeated in the lecture itself. First one is the Temple Mount or the Haram -e Sharif. Um, it's not all of it, but two parts are important. One, this one. Oh, we can see it. Ah. This is what is called today a Masjid al-Aqsa, and this is the Dome of the Rock. Arch arch architecturally, they are on the same axis. Now, this is Masjid al-Aqsa, but that's not true. Masjid al-Aqsa is the whole area of the Temple Mount. We don't see all of it. That's called Masjid al-Aqsa. This, which was, which was built on Masjid al-Aqsa, is called Al-Mughatta, the covered mosque. Now, this one is the Dome of the Rock. And the Dome of the Rock is a uh, basic for in controversy. But we'll talk about it now. This is, now, that's... That's one thing, this, the, dome, the Dome of the Rock and the Aqsa. In time, people started calling only this Al-Aqsa, and not, as it usually should be in the literature, the whole, uh, the whole complex of the, do of, the, of, the temple, of the Temple Mount. This is the whole plan. And uh, you see that the, the Aqsa Mosque here is only the, what is called the Aqsa Mosque. I mean, I'll tell you Al Mughatta. Al Mughatta is only in a part, very small part of the whole Masjid al Aqsa. This is it. Now, um, the other thing which I want to define is what's ha what is inside the Dome of the Rock. Inside the Dome of the Rock, there are three major inscriptions. There are many inscriptions, but three major inscriptions. One of them is inside the dome, it's inside the building itself, and uh, it is dated the year 70, 70, I think, two, 72 of the, of the Hijra. And um, the other two, which should be dated from the same time, are the, <coughs> are the two inscriptions on, <coughs> on the two, two gates of the, of the Aqsa, the northern gate and the southern gate. Sorry, and the eastern gate. The northern and the eastern gate. 
and um, they are um, the two. The, the, these two, like the l large, long inscription which I told you before, that is dated 72. They were all mutilated by the agents of the Abbasid Caliph Al Ma'mun. Ma whatever I'm telling you now, you know. I'm just just telling telling it as an introduction to know what we are going what we are going to deal with later on, which is the new thing. Now, they were mutilated by Mamun agents. They were mutilated by, sorry. They were mutilated by Al Mamun agents. But um, the main message is there. And the main, sorry? Yeah, I'm just making this a little bit closer to me. Yeah. Uh, the main message of the, the long inscription, it's 200, 240 meters inscription inside the dome itself. Uh, the main message is, there is one, one big mistake which the Christians are doing. They are talking about Jesus, uh, about Jesus as the Son of God. Namely, they talk about the Sonship and they talk about the Trinity. Two things which are not, of course, are not acceptable and they are wrong. Um, what was mutilated and taken away as you know, was the name of Abdul Malik, the builder of the Dome of the Rock. And the exchange of the name of Abdul Malik with the name of, uh, of Al Mamun. Again, these are things which are known to you, it's not, nothing is in you. The whole question of the Dome of the Rock has, is a basis for controversy. They say that Abdul Malik prevented the people of Syria from going on visit on, on, on Hajj to Mecca because the uh, Hijaz was occupied by a rebel caliph called Abdullah ibn Zubair. Also, you know it, it's not, nothing is new. Now, um, Professor um, Goldseer, Professor Goldseer said that it's, it, it is very possible, not very possible, it's almost sure, that Abdul Malik prevented the people of Syria going on Hajj to Mecca. Now, against the gold seer, many people, many many scholars, uh, were they were fined. They were f many scholars attacked him, and the last one was Jack Lassner. People also protest, were, were on his side, on accepted the idea of which which is presented by uh, um, by Goldseer or accepted by Goldseer, and also I. But I want to tell you, you've got to pay attention. The whole story of preventing people going to to to, to Mecca was one year, one year between 72 and 73 because the dome, of the, the dome of the rock was not built until the end of 72. So it was, it was one year because the 73, the rebel was killed and the whole empire came behind Abdul Malik and the year was called Sanati Jama'a, the year of unity so it's absolutely it's, it's it, the whole the whole the whole controversy is connected with one year only, and I'm sure 
that Abdul Malik really prevented people going on Hajj. But pay attention that we don't find, first of all, uh, we don't find that the 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 uh, prohibition of going on the Hajj to Mecca was 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 accepted well not only accepted it was it was um, the the whole prohibition on the hajj to mecca uh, at any rate the whole the whole idea of the pre preventing the hajj to mecca was not was not supervised very strongly, and there were no there were no punishments if you did not accept. The, 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 nothing nothing is said about it. Now, if there was a punishment or something, you would know that there was it was something which was which was which had to be to be accepted by the people. But it was there was not. So there's always a few people that went to Mecca and made the Hajj, and this does not mean that the prop that the that the caliph did not mean it when he said to stop people going on the Hajj to make. Now, um, so, um, you know, I'm not used to talk like this. I usually people that know me know that I'm, that I'm I'm uh, sorry for not 100% being 100% with myself. When health-wise, uh, you'll have to excuse me. And if I stop from time to time, try to memorize something that I, it's not because I don't respect you. I respect you very much, and thank you for listening, listening to me. Now. Um, so there was, there was the, the Dome of the Rock was built in the year 72. And uh, that was the, the year 73 was a great year. Abdul Malik that prevented people from going on Hajj to Mecca. Now he wanted to find a unifying place of Hajj, a unifying Qibla. So the only unifying Qibla possible is the is the is the um, Kaaba in the, in the Hijaz, and um, and that was was made now the only Qibla of Islam, and uh, Abdul Malik himself took the first Hajj with him. He was the leader of the Hajj, with nobody anymore to to question his authority everywhere. His authority in the east and in the west. Beforehand, there was no authority in the in the east. It was only authority in 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 the in Syria. That's the only thing. There was nothing else. Um, so, in Sana, when 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 the Sanati Jama was announced namely the year of unity was announced um, there was a need to create to create a qibla for islam there was no qibla before hands now the before before is before these hap things happened these uh, these I, these uh, developments happened um there was the Qiblas in most places were turned eastwards. Uh, my uh, colleagues, the late colleague, the late Suleiman Bashir, wrote the article Qibla Musharrika, and I found many another place I wrote about it. There was a Qibla turned to the east, not turned to Mecca. That was before the whole story comes comes here. And now that there was now now the need to there was a need to create a new, a new qibla for Islam, the only place that could be taken as a qibla is um, the Hajj, the um, Kaaba, uh, Kaaba in Mecca. 
So instead of Qibla Musharrika, now they got the Qibla of Islam. All, every, everything else was forgotten because there was no need for anything. There was no need to fight any rebel. The rebel was not, was not there anymore, he was dead. And not only this, the generals of the caliph and brought under his authority all the eastern part of the empire, which was not before under the authority of the caliph Abdul Malik. And that brings us, that's more or less the, uh, my little introduction. And that brings us to something very interesting that uh, was found at the end of the 19th century by Clermont Gano. And Clermont Gano found a piece of information written in Italian in uh, can we okay written in Italian by a custodian of the Holy Land called Mariano Morone da Maleo. The name was Terra Santa Nuovamente Illustrata. And in it, in chapter, in chapter 14, there are two pages, number number eight, eight. yeah, you can see it, Num, uh, uh, page 82 and 80, 83. And I'll read to you what is written there. You can follow it here on the left-hand side. You see Legon, you see there? Now, Trans as follows. Vi si leggono alcune istruzioni in idioma arabico. E fui curioso di averne copia. Me per quanta diligenza sepi fare una sola ne hebi. C'è tratta in italiano vuol dire era cosa della fabbrica del nobil tempio che l'altissimo Dio, lo nobility, il re grande figlio di Mesuan, che Dio gli hebi misericordia, e fu l'anno 65 de Saraceni. No, you understood? <laughs> yeah? If not, I'll translate into English. Uh, he writes like this. He deals with the Dome of the Rock and describes it. And he says some inscriptions in Arabic language can be read there, there namely in the Dome of the Rock. And I, and I was curious to have a copy of them. But despite the efforts I was able to make, I only got one of them which turned into Italian means the cause of the building of the noble temple, pay attention, temple, the noble temple, so right there, they lost it. Yeah, okay, yeah. The cause of the building of the noble temple, may the all highest God ennoble it, was the great king, son of Mezuan, may God have mercy on him, and it was the year 65 of the Saracens. Now, which comes to be, sorry, Saracen, who start their calendar, uh, look at it now, the Italian, look, start their calendar in the year 621 of Christ, which comes to be the year 686 of Christ, but it seems that this inscription is contrary to what was said above, because this son of Mezuan was... Abdul Melik, that means servant of the king. So it was not Omar 
the author. So he was very much interested on the, the, the Dome of the Rock being called Mosque of Omar. There is something which cannot be, he thinks that it, it, he, he described something great because in this inscription, uh, they speak about Abdul Malik ibn Merwan. He was not interested in us, but he was interested in his own, his own view on Gnati. Now let's see what, what he, a few words which he uses. He uses the word the Nobil Tempio. The Nobil Tempio, the copy of the German, the German traveler Troilo, who copied him verbatim, call it Templo. But the same thing, Tempio and Templo is the same thing. But he calls it Tempio. Now, pay attention, we are talking about a situation in which the uh, the, uh, ne, ne, the, 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 use, the usage of temple is for the dome, dome of the rock. Why? Because the dome of the rock basically was built as imitation of Solomon temple, not as a mosque in itself. Solomon temple. So it's called, in Italian, so, so Troilo in Italian calls it templo. Morone, is taking, talking about the Dome of the Rock, referring to it as temple. Filio de Mezuan, both Moroni and Troilo, Troilo is the German, both Moroni and Troilo make this mistake, small mistake. Instead of Merwan, Mezuan, it's very easy to make it, it's only one point. Uh, I, mean, I cannot blame any, any, any fly, but at any rate, uh, so Ms. Ms. One, they, they can e easily be in red marijuana. Morone, he, he made this mistake. And then Lano, the, the, year, the year that interests us, Lano Sesanta, Cinque de Saraceni. That's, <laughs> this, this, um, this is very interesting. We have got the year 65. And we'll find out that, in fact, the year 65 is, in, is very important for us because it appears somewhere else. So, first of all, we have got the year 65, and we don't, the people that were looking at these inscriptions, they, they said, or this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this um, report by Morone, they said the impossible, which, which, uh, which year 65? But in fact, Morone is speaking <laughs> about something which is very, very interesting. So, so the first of all, there is a year 65, and Morone says it was built in the year 65. Now, before going on, I want to show you some, something else connected with the idea which I told, we spoke to you before about it, connected with the idea of discovered, of discuss, discussing or discovering the new, the new uh, Qibla. Many, quite, quite a few years ago, my friend Uzi Avner, who sits here, and thank you Uzi for coming to hear me, but this for you is not new, although you've got different ideas about it. But Uzi Avner and I, we, we dug a, what my, I might call even, kind of a Bedouin, a Bedouin uh, mosque in the Negev. Well, this is, uh, this is a, it's not built mosque, it's just, just a symbol of a mosque. And this mosque is done with, f from, uh, how do you call it? Sled. Huh? Sled, sleds. Sleds, uh, to what, but, uh, but then? Sled, sleds. Okay, the slabs. Okay, it was made of slabs stuck into, stuck into the earth and create a, 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 a de 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 lined, um, a, area of a mosque. 
I'll show you it is both. Found it? No. Okay, at, at any rate, you find that there is a mosque. And when we were digging it, we found out that this mosque has two, two qiblas. One qibla to the east, and one qibla later on to the west, to the, to the south, to Mecca. For me, it was almost sure, almost, because we can never be sure in these things. It was almost sure that first there was the old Qibla, and you can see it was old, and then there is a new Qibla, which is really put nicely on the southern wall. So what I can, imagine, what can, what I can understand is that um, an order came Tell, tell, telling every, every tell, telling the uh, the Muslims that from now on they have got a new qibla, turn like this, where well, you can you can show it. Uh, he, he didn't see it, of course. Not the caliph. The caliph did not see it, but uh, it became like this, namely all the all the uh, all the uh, the. Uh, Kiblas turned to the east, were changed to me to, to the south. Well, that's just I remembered it. I said I shouldn't forget it. Uh, but I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised I can't find the what's the name. Must be. <coughs> no? Okay. Um, okay. So uh, the. Um, <coughs> So the question is, what is this year 65? They all speak about it. And the answer is that the year 65 appear in a piece of information that we find in the uh, piece of information that we find in two sources, particularly not, not all, they are late. But they are quoting, they are quoting um, early sources. And one is in Ibn Khaldun's book. One is in Ibn Khaldun's book. And one is in Makrizi. Ibn Khaldun and Makrizi are very late. You are talking 13th, 14th century. But it's very clear that they are quoting something old. And that's what we read in Ibn Khaldun. Pay attention. And I read in Arabic. وَفِي سَنَةْ خَمْسْ وَسِتِينَ مِنَ الْهِجْرَةِ زَادَ عَبْدُ الْمَلِكِ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَى وَأَدْخَلَ سَخْرَ فِي الْحَرَمِ زَادَ عَبْدُ الْمَلِكِ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَى وَأَدْخَلَ سَخْرَ Fil Haram. In the year 65 after Hijra, I'm translating, Abdul Malik enlarged Masjid al-Aqsa. And you remember what I told you about Masjid al-Aqsa? It's the whole esplanade, the whole thing. Uh, and uh, incorporated the rock in the Haram. So now we are talking about the rock. Now it's clear that the Dome of the Rock was built on the rock. But what is it? What is, the, what is this rock? In the year 333, the um, traveler from Bordeaux, I don't know if you know the name, but there was a traveler that traveled from Bordeaux and left us a very, very interesting detailed uh, discussion of, of his travel. And the traveler for Borgo tells us that in a certain date in the year, Jews come to the Holy Mount. They come to a rock which has got a hole in it, perforated rock, and they pray, and they rent their clothes, and they cry, 
and they go away. Now, you don't have to be a great expert on Jewish lit uh, art uh, and Jewish uh, uh, religion to understand that he was speaking about the ninth of Ab, the Tisha Ab, the day in which the Jews mourn to this very day the uh, the uh, destruction of the two temples. So we are talking about a rock with a hole in it. But no word is said about temple, a rock which has got also a cave inside it. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. First, first of all, here you have it. Here you have it. You've got first of all the rock. It's not a small rock. And there is a hole here, you see the hole? That's the hole in the rock. But this is a huge rock, it's the height of man. And it's in the middle of the Dome of the Rock. And um, it's regarded to be the representative of the Haram, of the, of the temple. Why we got the temple? The temple is where the, this rock was inside the temple, the Jews say. And that's what interested the Muslims. They connected the rock with the knowledge that the Jews have got about this, the perforated rock. So that's one thing, and pay attention what he says, um, what, uh, what, uh, 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 no, Ibn Khaldun says. What Ibn Khaldun says, I'm repeating it, he said in the year 65, Abdul Malik brought the rock into the Haram. In other words, the rock was outside the Haram. And here we come to another piece of information by uh, Makrizi, also quoting, probably not the same, order, but not the same in, in, uh, information, but, um, but uh, another information that he has, and he starts telling us the story what happened when Jerusalem was occupied by the Muslims. And he said when it was occupied by the Muslims, it, who was there if not, no less than Umar ibn al-Khattab. I, I wish that you accepted this idea, although there is no truth in it whatsoever. But... Um, we want to read what he has got to say about Omar ibn al-Khattab on the Temple Mount. وَإِنَّهُ أَشَارَ عَلَيْهِ الْبَطْرَكِ أَشَارَ عَلَيْهِ الْبَطْرَكِ بِإِتِّخَاذْ مَوْضِعِ الصَّخْرَ مَسْجِدًا وَكَانَ فَوْقَهَا تُرَابْ كَثِيرٌ فَتَنَاوَلَ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ مِنَ التُرَابِ فِي ثَوْبِهِ فبادر المسلمون لرفعه حتى لم يبق منه شيء وعمر المسجد الأقصى أمام الصخرة فلما كانت أيام عبد الملك بن مروان this is the thing which interests us ولما كان فلما كانت أيام عبد الملك بن مروان أدخل الصخرة في حرم الأقصى وذلك سنة خمس وستين من الهجرة I don't need more than that now I'm translating into English. Following the capitulation of Jerusalem, the patriarch, namely Sophronius, advised him, advised Omar, to make the rock the site of the mosque. It was covered with abundant earth. Omar started clearing it using his garment to remove the earth. And the Muslims followed suit until nothing was left of it. He built the mosque in front, namely south of, in front of, uh, of the rock. And when it was in the year, in the days of uh, Abdul Malik, son of Marwan, he incorporated the rock 
in the Haram of Al-Aqsa. Here we have got here something that happens. First, first thing, the rock was outside. Now I want to show you something, a plant. Now I'll come back to this. See that? No, see? Okay. Well, I drew, I drew a situation that was on the Temple Mount at the time of Abdul Malik. What, what happened there? First of all, no, there is uh, things which are connected. There is one, there are, if you pay attention, there is one, two, and three on the side here. One, two, and three. What are these things? We know from the Mishnah and from Josephus that the size of Herod's temple was far, far smaller than this huge area of the Temple Mount. And um, what we read in the sources concerning this, we read in the Mishnah in Tractate Midot. We hear, we read the following. Har Habayit haya chamesh mot ama al chamesh mot ama. Rubo min adarom, sheni lo min amizrach, shlishi lo min atzafon, mi'uto min amarav. The Temple Mount was a square, present five five hundred by five a square of five hundred cubit by five hundred cubit. The largest open space outside the temple was the south, next to it was the east, next to then next to it was the north, and next to it was the west. Now, in other words, the measurements of the Temple Mount, according to the sages who saw it before the destruction of the year 70, was a square of some 250 meters on 250 meters. So, what I did, I first of all I took, ah, and Josephus on the other hand speaks about state by state namely about 600 feet by 600 feet, or 182 or 3 meters, on 102 or 3 meters. So what I did is, I did the following. What was it? Ah. First of all, I drew what Josephus says. So you can see. I'll have to be born again, I don't want to understand these things. Okay, so this is number one, and this is the size, according to Josephus, this was the size of the, in, the, the esplanade in the, in, the, in the time of the second temple in the building the, the built by Hodus, by Herod. The other one is the Mishnah, this is the Mishnah. Now pay attention, in the, the, according to Hold, uh, the Herod, the, temp, the Dome of the Rock, or the Rock itself, is outside the, outside the borders of the Temple. The time of the Mishnah is just about, touches the, first, the, uh, the, the line of the no in the north, and then if you take, for instance, A to B, namely the length of the southern wall as we have it today and we create from it a square and it is this is the time in which the dome of the rock or the rock itself comes in now this is this is clear that what abdul malik does he finds out that the clear area in the, on the on the, on the on the temple mount the clear area in the temple mount doesn't have the sahra inside so what he did, he pushed, he took the year 65 and he pushed the northern border of the, see, he pushed the northern border from here 
or here or here it depends that we don't know how what exactly was the size in the time which the temple was built but at any rate he pushes the wall the northern wall up as far as here and that's where the Sahara comes in so what Moroni is telling us he said Abdul Malik did something and what Abdul Malik did he brought he doesn't say but we know it from the other sources that he brought the Sahara into the area of the temple and then he could build the Dome of the Rock so the Dome of the Rock was had two dates connected with its building one is 65 and one is 66 we know 66 from Mujiridin, the great historian of Jerusalem and Hebron and so it's, 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 it's the, the, so uh, Abdul Malik started building the Sahra he started building the Dome of the Rock in the year 65 creating for it a new a completely new area where it can be in the middle in the midst of this area and then and then he he started building the Dome of the Rock itself which he finished in the year 72 and by the year 72 all the situation changed and all the stories of uh, of uh, the preventing people from going to the Hajj there is no question that this was an order of the Caliph I'm sure about that now in 1979 in 1979, we published a book to teach the students of Professor Barnett, the late Professor Barnett, published a book in his honor. And he was dead by then, I think. And uh, I wrote an article, a very long article, about Moroni's inscription. And in this article, I said, and I'll read to you, this is something, let's read, something. At any rate, I said, and I can't find it now. Uh, I, I said that no inscription was found, neither in the 17th century, not in any other century, and uh, um, uh, we are we are talking about about Morone quoting uh, <coughs> quoting uh, a Cicerone, namely a travel agent, a travel travel guide, avec un papier dans sa poche. He had a paper in his pocket from which he used to lecture the people, and that's what Morone Morone is telling us. Nothing of the sort. Now I'm here standing in front of you, mea culpa, <laughs> and I just wrote a new article explaining why Moroni is absolutely right, basing himself, basing himself on good material, the minute, the, sim, the and, and of course the information given to us by, uh, by Ibn Khaldun in Makrizi is describe for us a real thing that's it I'm sorry I'm sorry I can't continue but you can find you can find an article of mine in the new corpus the corpus inscriptionum arabicarum palaestine volume 7 there is the whole story there so if you had time you can read it thank you Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, yes, recommended to read uh, the time. corpus, we and time. we are in time, we have time for questions. I see also that you incorporated the atmosphere of the custodians and the flagellation uh, from what you've done, and then uh, now you're 
you're uh, okay with yourself having written again about uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mario I'm, Mariano I'm sorry. <laughs> Mariano I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, yes um, I would like to uh, open the floor for questions I have many questions uh, I'm sure you have many we're dealing with uh, an important piece of information uh, on the Temple Mount, on the Dome of the Rock, on Abd al-Malek, what, what should not be related to Omar. Uh, so please, you're welcome uh, to, to questions. Professor Gans. Professor, you said that the uh, name is a description by the term temple. Uh, is the word in Arabic haikal? Sorry, but if you ask the questions, I'll do it. Uh, um, I try to reconstruct it in Arabic. And this is what I find, what I say. First of all, you can reconstruct whatever is told in Italian into Arabic. And that's what I find. Amara bi imarat hadha al-haram al-sharif sharrafahu Allah ta'ala Abdullah Abdul Malik ibn Mirwan Amir al-Mu'minin rahmatullahi alayhi That's very possible reconstruction of the Italian, which I did into possible, possible um, inscription name, as if I'm reading an Ar inscription in Arabic and not translation in Italian. Okay, I formulate my question again. Do we find in all the inscription in Arabic? For you said that it is mentioned. Um, it is mentioned. Um, uh, that the, the idea is, is building a temple which resembles the temple of Solomon. It is written in the sources, in all sources, apart from this, it is written, yes? Okay. Okay. Yes. I, in these sources, is the term that is used is Haikal. I am mean, interested about the term Haikal in all sources. Kholpa, every, every time they speak about the Dome of the Rock, they call it Haikal Suleiman. Okay, that, this was my they question. They call yes. it Haikal Suleiman all, all the time. So it was basically built to represent Suleiman, not to represent any any Islamic thing, but in court, and in fact, uh, they represent Solomon, great, a great king and a great prophet. But don't forget that's not, no problem because Suleiman, as you know, was a Muslim. Of course. And David was a Muslim. Yes. And as such, this is the Haikal Suleiman, the Haikal of the Muslim prophet. It was okay. Now, uh, so, Mecca, uh, when, when the Qibla was moved to Mecca, and now everybody was speaking about the Qibla, Qibla and the Hijaz, Jerusalem lost, first of all, a bit of its authority and, and uh, respect, because it, she was called Qibla Mansukha. Mm -hmm. It was not an ordinary Qibla, it was a... Uh, uh, abolished called Qibla, Qibla, Qibla Mansukha. And but, behold, even so, Jerusalem remained a very holy city. And if you uh, just brought with me the term, when, uh, so the, until the end of days, 
there's going to be good relations between the Kaaba and the Sahra. And now we are reading in one of the Fadayal's book, Bab la takum al-sa'a hatta tuzaf al-Kaaba ila Sahra. There will not be the end of days until there is going to be a celestial, a celestial wedding between the Kaaba and the Sahra. And, and Moshe, do you know at what time they moved? In modern time, in modern polemics, they started to speak about al haikal al mazum. When did it begin? Again. I'm not so sure, I can't point, pinpoint, but I'm sure this is amongst the works of Haj Amin Husseini and uh -huh. other, so because I read, I, read, I read a book, a little booklet, dealing with the Dome of the Rock, in which the Haikal Mazaum appears there. Mm -hmm. But I can't, can't tell you when it started being done. Yeah. Thank you. Can I make um, a small point? But uh, switch on your microphone, yes. About four or five years ago, there is a book published by a smart writer and a student, Dear Demand. And the, the book is called Sela uh, Kiyomenu, Sela Kiyomam. Anybody could translate it into English, Sela Kiyomenu, Sela Kiyomam the rock of our existence and the rock of their existence, something like that. And from that book it is clear that the recent, that the expression Haikal uh, Mazum is very recent one, very, very recent. I can't uh, tell you exactly when, but it is in the last decades. Now, I would like to ask a question following the same uh, issue of terminology. Uh, you opt to translate uh, from the Italian to the Arabic to uh, reconstruct as haram. Why, why translate haram and not haikal? Is haram already being used in 65? I attempted something. I thought, what could it, what could be there? So I said, it could be either haram uh -huh. or could be could be haikal. Uh -huh. But it would be accept, uh, acceptable uh, haram haram al sharif. Because they never it was never used in inscriptions. Uh -huh. Haikal was yeah. never used in inscription, but it was used in the Fadai literature non-stop uh -huh. because uh, in the Fadai literature in the Fadai literature you. You read what, what, what used to happen in the Dome of the Rock. And what used to happen in the Dome of the Rock, there was, there was special ritual of anointing this, every, uh, when, when the Dome was already built, of anointing uh, the Sahra, the rock, um, of anointing it with a special anointment and burning incense inside. And this used to happen on Monday and Thursday. Now Monday and Thursday mean nothing in Islam. But Monday and Thursday are very important in the Jewish culture and Jewish religion. Yes. Yeah, man. Uh, so I, I, found it, I found your argument very convincing um, about what might have happened in 65, and I want to suggest maybe a parallel. So to my mind, maybe this is inaccurate, but to, to my mind, holy places of the biblical era are usually Hadis, Mubarak, things like this, but holiness and, or sacredness in an Arabian context is Haram, right? And so we have Mecca as Al-Masjid Al-Haram, right? And one thing that happens after the rise of Islam is we have other places become harams, right? The most prominent example that we have under the Umayyads that would be a parallel to Jerusalem is Medina. Medina was not a haram when the Prophet undertook the Hijra to Yathrib, etc. But later it becomes a haram and the Umayyads establish a boundary for that haram. And it seems to me that 
I, I think it's brilliant to say that uh, your reconstruction, Al-Haram Al-Sharif, I think what we have described for 65 might be, I guess what the, the Roman era we call a timinos, right? So a border for the temple complex that was expanded by Abd al-Malik at the time in preparation perhaps for what was finished in, what, 692 or whatever, whenever it was. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I have two, two questions. One, whether the, the Dome of the Rock was originally a directional uh, building, so did it have a Qibla or, uh, and uh, uh, the Mihrab, or it, it was added? Uh, because it, it, well, the whole structure doesn't really make sense. It's not oriented to, towards something. Uh, I don't even know what, that, to what it is centered. It's not clear to me because it's not in the... Um, yeah, so that's, that's one thing. The other is, is I'm just confused by, by Moroni because, because he seemed to have the authentic, uh, the authentic text, the uh, Mazwan, uh, so, so the the letters are not don't have the dots. So they, they did, the person who read it, um, they didn't have the dots. So, so someone who read the text read it correctly, except they they didn't know the name. Uh, so the, uh, that's one thing. And the, but how how the person could read Abdul Malik even Mazman if it was uh, correct, uh, changed by by Ma'amun. So, uh, I don't know, there must, yeah. Just puzzle. Uh, well, we don't have much time, but uh, I will reply to that. Actually, the inscriptions that Professor Sharon is referring to that were tempered and changed to the name of Al Ma'amun are first the one inside the Dome of the Rock in the octagon, the 240 meters, and then the two uh, plots uh, that were in the eastern and the northern, and they were also changed. This one we never saw. Actually, it was seen by uh, the custodian. And we only have the Italian. Perhaps this was never changed. Uh, this is a true evidence uh, of what was there. And uh, referring to your other uh, question, because we don't have time, I'll be glad, and Professor Sharon, uh, we can refer to that, because this is a longer uh, reply <laughs> to, to the question. I, I want to add only one thing. Uh, um, when, when, is, when, we, when we speak about Abdul Malik ibn, ibn Mazwan, we know that Moroni knew some Arabic because he could not understand it otherwise. The inscription that came to him, there was, there was, it seemed to him that Mazwan would be better than Merwan. There's nothing because there are no diacritical points. So he did the best he could. And he, he gave us the Sesanta Sei, that's very important. Sesanta Sei, that's the year 65. 65 mm -hmm. is a sort of completely new concept of that year. And the idea of pushing the Haram upwards and putting the Sahara in the middle, this is something which we never, we didn't know. Now we know it, only now. And this year, not before. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Uh, there are questions. Uh, can you uh, put sounds on Zoom? Okay. Okay, Yes. What's that? Uh, Ushoel. Uh, uh, to follow on the previous question, there's a problem here, and, as, and the fact that I don't know of any monumental description from your Islamic period from the first few centuries where the name of the kid has mentioned that the pattern in it. So there are no academics in any monumental inscriptions. Just the case is a given name. So does that not cause a bit of a problem for 
on the meeting uh, or on the day that the, the, this inscription was there because <laughs> what, the, what, the, 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 the academic, academic is small, but the money in my wall. Small, very sad. Monumental inscriptions about the money there are all all these. מה שהוא אומר זה שהיה כמה שידוע לו בכל הכתובות המונומנטליות של המאה הראשונה של האסלאם אין להם את הפטרונים השם ופה אנחנו מקבלים את כל השם עבד אל מאלק בן מרואן אז האם הוא שואל אותך האם זה לא משונה שזה מופיע בכתובת הזאת של 65? Yeah, you are right. Where, where are you? Oh, the man is that small. Okay. You are right, yes. It's, it's, that's, that's, uh, this unusual situation with this Abdul Malik Ibn Merwan. There's no, all the time there's Abdul Malik, but not Abdul Malik Ibn Merwan. You are right. You are correct. But I've got no answer. You also yes. have got, huh? May, may, but this is, but this is might might be out of uh, out of the ordinary. Well, in this case is Abdul Malik Ibn Merwan because Morona tells us Ibn Merwan without Abdul Malik. Only later on he adds this Abdul Malik was Abdul Malik Ibn Merwan, and then he says servo del rey, the, the servo, the, the servant of the of the king. Okay. Well, but at any rate, it's nice to read it in Italian, isn't it? <laughs> um, thank you very much. I think that we are, um, we draw to, a, draw to an end. I had still a question I want to ask about Sid bin al Jazi and the year 689, but this we'll talk about it yes. later. So thank you so much uh, for your lecture, and uh, we appreciate uh, your efforts despite having uh, this uh, little accident today. So uh, lots of health and uh, we'll have to take a break now. And then in half an hour, we're going to come back for the last lecture of the day uh, by Dr. Tofik Dadli. Thank you.